In a previous episode, we took a look at what it would take to connect to a Postgres database from c -sharp code. We looked at raw connections as well as using Dapper. But what if you're somebody who really likes Entity Framework and you still want to talk to a Postgres database? Let's mash on that. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. I'm Dave Paquette, and today Simon Timms will be showing us that we can use Entity Framework with something that isn't SQL Server. I know, it's exciting. Hmm. So let's get on into it. So this is the same project that I had open last time. Uh, and if you remember where we left off, we had used Dapper to just query uh, the month names from our table called months. Um, so let's go and do the same sort of thing this time with Entity Framework. So if we pop over here, draw new get packages, I've already taken the liberty of installing the Entity Framework core Postgres SQL connector here for Entity Framework. Uh, and we can go ahead and maybe build ourselves a little database here. So I'm going to add a folder here called models. And inside of this, I'm going to add class uh, called month, which is going to contain our month here. Um, so we have public int id, set on that, and a public string. Oh, look at that. I think that's almost what we need mm. right there. Cool. Uh, and then we will go and use this to create a database context. So let's call this uh, months context here. And this is going to look like this. It's going to extend a db context and we'll have a public um, db set of month months. This is doing really well at all to complete for me. It is. Okay. Uh, so now, in theory, back in our program, here we can comment out our dapper and come up with a similar thing for Entity Framework. Uh, so in this case, we will do um, months context, months context here, uh, dot months. And uh, we'll just have that. And I'm going to steal the same piece of code here. And there we go. That's most of that. Um, so one thing that we're missing here, well, a couple of things that we're missing here uh, is a way to get our database connection string over here to our months context here. Um, all right, so within our context here, I'm just going to throw in an override on configuring here and I'm just gonna go and roughly steal our connection string from over here and feed that in. Okay, so that gets us most of the way there. Uh, let's try running this and see what happens. I feel like you're alluding to it not working. Yes, I know that it's not going to work, but let's see why. Okay, so here we go. Relation months does not exist. Well, that's weird because we've been successfully querying months in other places here. Um, so yeah. what's going on? So what's actually happening here is there is some case sensitivity at play here. Uh, so Postgres, when it queries, uh, this will be case insensitive, but if you were to put like quotes around this, uh, it would be case sensitive. And it looks like Entity Framework um, is expecting us to have, or at least the driver for it is expecting to have the right casing in place. So we can get around that by just going over into our month thing here and adding a table Yeah, And we'll just set a name on that table two months. We can run that again. We should get a little bit further this time. All right. Uh, so now we're down to m.id does not exist. So this is just because I have set the labels in the database to be month name and month ID. 
which in hindsight I regret, but we can get around that too with the same sort of approach here. So we'll just put a column in here. Well, these inconsistencies are mostly just because it was a table that already existed and you weren't following the conventions. Right. That yeah, so if I had named things properly, if I had come into this thinking, oh, I'm going to use Entity Framework and there are some conventions for sure. it, then I, I probably would have named them properly. Um, Makes sense. So, I mean, I, in hindsight, I, I always dislike having like the name of the table within the, the properties of that table because you end up with just like month ID, month name, month number of days, mm. month, 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 all over the place. I mean, it is useful sometimes when you're crossing tables to be able to quickly see that like, oh, this thing here, I need to have month ID is equal to month ID on my foreign key. Um, but mostly I try and just keep it with ID. But obviously whenever I was building this database, I was in mind of something else. So we'll run this again. And hopefully this time it will work. Uh, oh, almost. I forgot to print out the, the property. Uh, uh, so this is previously month had been a string, but now month is actually the, the entity. So we need to just print out the month dot name here. And there we go. Amazing. That's all of our months. Um, so from what I have read, I mean, I haven't tried it exhaustively, but it seems like the, the Postgres drivers here for Entity Framework are pretty much pin compatible uh, with SQL Server, with obviously a few little foibles around like casing and things. Uh, so it should be pretty easy to build up your queries in the same way that you would before. Um, I don't think Entity Framework in general uh, derives particularly weird queries that are only supported by uh, one flavor of SQL Server versus Postgres. Uh, so this should, in theory, just work out of the box without too many problems. Um, so I'm going oh, to awesome. dig around when and have a little bit more and see. When you had the uh, NuGet screen up, it looked like there were some interesting packages there too. Yes. Like extensions for Nota time and um, a bunch of interesting things there actually. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue and take a look at some of these extensions to Postgres as we go forward. Uh, so there's a bunch of um, really interesting extensions that are available for Postgres. So things for doing like time series databases, graph databases, um, really good support for, for geographic data, those sorts of things. So normally you'd expect those to kind of like ship out of the box in a database. And of course, because databases are rarely versioned, uh, it's often like a big lag time between people being like, oh, we're really cool databases could do X, Y, Z and it working. But with Postgres, mm -hmm. there's a whole community of interesting extensions that you can plug into it. Uh, so we'll try at least one of those in our next episode. Cool. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. Remember to like, comment and share and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Huh?